Hello and welcome to the Music Marketing Podcast. This is Bob Baker, and today we're going to focus on something new. Have you heard about Periscope? It's the new streaming video app that's connected with Twitter. I think it was purchased by Twitter earlier this year, and it is all the rage among people who pay attention and are involved in rages related to the internet. Not to be confused with a rave party that's something altogether different, but uh, Periscope is pretty hot now. And so if you have not heard about it, if you're not using it yet, this would be a good time to uh, download the free app and check it out and see what you think of it. And on this episode, I'm going to give you some of my uh, top ways that you can use Periscope for music marketing. Sound good? This episode is brought to you by the Gorilla Music Marketing Handbook, which just happens to be my long-running, I must say, highly acclaimed uh, book for indie music promotion. You've probably heard of it. Maybe you even own a digital or a print version. And I just want to make you aware that I recently revamped the page on my website into this... Uh, awesome bundle package where you can get actually a paperback copy of the Gorilla Music Marketing Handbook with free shipping. It also comes with some really cool downloads. One of them being an audio program that I created a year or two ago called 19 Cash Flow Strategies for Musicians and Bands. And it's a 78 minute audio program with uh, worksheets that walk you through a lot of different ways to brainstorm ways that you can make money with your music right now. Because I believe that a lot of musicians are sitting on top of opportunities they're not even aware of. And this program will help you discover those things. As part of that bundle, you also get access to my online course called Music Marketing Demystified and a 39-minute exclusive interview with Derek Sivers, who is an entrepreneur and founder of CD Baby. Again, you get a physical copy of the book and all of those goodies for one low price. It includes free shipping to anywhere in the world. You can't beat that offer. So just go to thebuzzfactor.com, click on the books tab at the top, and you will uh, see right away at the top of the page there a link to the Gorilla Music Marketing Handbook page. And in the show notes, I'll have a direct link to the page. So uh, check that out. I hope you take advantage of it. Thousands of people have benefited from this book over the years. It's launched and helped many music careers. It appeared in the movie The School of Rock. It's been used in many, many uh, university music business classes, so on and so forth. So I'd really love for you to have this latest version of it. So go and check that out. Just one more quick thing before we get to the Periscope music marketing tips. Uh, I really am excited about an upcoming event I'm holding in my own hometown here of St. Louis, Missouri. It's called the Creative Entrepreneur Summit. It is on Saturday, November 14th, an all-day event where I will walk you and dozens and dozens of other creative people through my seven steps to building a thriving career in the arts. Certainly, if you live in the St. Louis area or somewhere within that, you know, Missouri, Illinois, Midwest region of the United States, it's a no-brainer to uh, make travel plans. But even if you have to travel a little further, I think it's going to be well worth your while to come to this thing, not only for what you're going to learn. Yes, I'm going to walk you through a number of exercises that will allow you to leave at the end of that day with a plan, with a specific way of describing who you are and what you do, who your ideal fans are, the best ways to communicate with them. You know, the building blocks for uh, making more of your career, making more of an impact. But probably the most important thing with these live events is the people that you will meet. It's going to be highly interactive. I'm going to be encouraging a lot of collaboration. And so my purpose with this event is to have you walk away with new relationships and collaborations and things that will last a lifetime, new friendships, not only in the music business, but in other creative fields as well, because there will be writers and visual artists, musicians, you know, hopefully filmmakers and pe creative people of all types, just inspiring and uh, lifting each other up to reach more fans and to make more of an impact in the world. So anyway, for the next, uh, I don't know, a few weeks or for a limited time, there's a really special offer where I am really, it's a, it's a ridiculous offer is the way I'm describing it because not only will you get admission to the full uh, all-day event, I'm also going to give you a one-year membership to my new uh, Empowered Artist Mastermind group. That alone is a $240 value. I'm going to give you access to all seven of my online courses, including 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist and Word of Mouth Marketing, and there's a, a number of them just on music marketing alone. 
And this is really to light a fire under your butt. For a limited time, you will uh, get a second person. It's like a two-for-one deal. You purchase your uh, admission, and you can get a friend or a business partner or a colleague or whatever. Someone who really needs this type of experience can come with you and get into the event. Also get access to the mastermind and the courses, because it's really it's like almost too good to be true. So check that out. There's a special link in the show notes for a page for this special offer. But if you want to know what it is right now, it's uh, hosted on my uh, website for authors, and it's at fulltimeauthor.com forward slash special. Again, fulltimeauthor.com forward slash special to get that awesome offer I just described. All right, that does it for the preliminary stuff. Let's talk about Periscope for music marketing, shall we? All right, so Periscope, like I said, it's all the rage. A lot of internet movers and shakers are jumping on this Periscope bandwagon and claiming that it's the hot new thing. You know, I guess well, time will tell how long lasting it is, but I've used it a little bit and it's pretty cool. So basically Periscope is a free app that you can download to your phone, either an iPhone or an Android. You can get the app in either the Apple, uh, the App Store. <laughs> or the Google Play Store on Android phones. And again, it's free, and it is uh, connected to and owned by Twitter, so you must already have a Twitter account, I'm pretty sure, to be able to start an, an account. So hopefully you're already on Twitter and using it. If not, it would probably be a good time to do so, uh, and then download that app and connect it to your Twitter account. So as I said, basically Periscope is strictly created for streaming video, streaming live uh, video. And when you start a broadcast, for one, it will alert people who are following you uh, within Periscope itself. It also automatically posts that you are streaming live to your Twitter account. And so that's why it does help if you have at least a small Twitter following to start with. But if not, all hope is not lost. If you just started Twitter, you only have, you know, five or 50 or 100 or whatever people following you. This is a great time to practice with uh, Periscope without a large audience. So you can figure it out and make mistakes. Everybody <laughs> kind of uh, makes mistakes with Periscopes or tries to, you know, has to figure it out as they go along. So that's actually great to do with a small following. But if you already have a larger Twitter following, it's perfect. Uh, you can jump right in and people will... Uh, know about your and attend your live broadcast right off the bat. But here's the thing. At first, I thought that uh, it would help or that it might be required for you to be connected to Wi-Fi to you know, broadcast live streaming video. However, people do it all the time with just the normal phone connection. You know, they're out somewhere, nowhere near a Wi-Fi connection, and it seems to work fairly well <laughs> most of the time. So it's pretty cool. You can live stream a drop of a hat uh, wherever you are, as long as you have a good phone connection. Of course, as long as the people watching you have a decent connection as well. And by the way, here's a new Periscope development. It used to be, up until just uh, recent, the past week or two, Periscope only worked in portrait mode. So it was always in a vertical position, which I know a lot of people shoot video with their phones that way, but I guess I'm an old fashioned, you know, video should be widescreen kind of guy. And so I do prefer my video to be wider than it is tall. And they just updated the app so that you can do either landscape or portrait mode. Totally up to you. So this is what's cool about Periscope or why so many people like it because it's very interactive. As soon as you go live with a broadcast, assuming that people are, you know, you have people following you and that they uh, and that they have Periscope and they they tune in and you and they can watch uh, live in the app itself. There's they but they can also watch when it's web based. However, I think they must be on their phone to be able to comment. And that's the cool thing. As soon as you broadcast live, it starts showing you a scrolling thing of who's tuned in. It shows you the number of people that are watching live at that moment, and people can comment. And there's also this thing called hearts, which is sort of the way that they've gamified Periscope, uh, where people watching just tap their screen, and a little heart will float up from the bottom right of the screen. And somehow uh, Periscope actually keeps track of the total number of hearts that you've got, the total number of hearts that each individual broadcast has. And so and they reward people with more hearts with, I think by showing it more uh, in, their, in their feeds. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of people will ask people to just rapidly tap. They call them heart attacks, which sounds a little brutal, but uh, it's the good kind of heart attack, I suppose. 
So I guess that's the thing that draws a lot of people to Periscope is this live interactive component. And even though like when you first start watching scopes is what they call them, by the way, the broadcasts often are called scopes. You know, short for Periscope, of course, and uh, they do. They are a little bit chaotic as people are trying to talk into the camera, and then they're watching the comments as they fly up, and they, you know, they go back and forth and get a little distracted and disjointed. But it's still pretty cool. It's like a poor man's webinar, I suppose, uh, where you can interact with people in in real time using your phone and looking at, you know, you're looking at the screen at yourself uh, on camera, and then you see the comments fly by, you see the hearts coming up. And it's very live and very, very raw, too. So maybe it, there's that appeal to it. So a couple of uh, best practices here to keep in mind and make the best use of it. In the settings within Periscope, uh, you can uh, choose to automatically save your broadcast uh, you know, to your photos or save the videos to your phone, which I would suggest that you do. Because here's the thing. Of course, people can tune in while you're live. And then supposedly uh, Periscope, only keeps them on the site for a replay for like 24 hours. Although lately I've noticed that they're available a little more than 24 hours. The replays are basically, they don't keep them indefinitely. There is a website called catch.me. It's K-A-T-C-H dot M-E. Uh, that if you connect it to your Twitter account, it will sort of like capture it and it will archive it on the catch site indefinitely. Um, so that's one way to do that. However, I found... What a lot of people are doing, what I started doing myself, is when I download the videos, you know, I set it up so that it saves to my phone, and then upload that to Dropbox or iCloud or whatever later, and I pull it into a video editing software, take out some of the mumbo jumble, especially at the beginning when you're greeting people, and then um, create a YouTube video that I can repurpose and use later. So that's an option for you as well to get a little bit more life and purpose out of each uh, broadcast that you do. So typically when people start a uh, broadcast, at least the power users that I've been observing who are using it effectively, they start off the first couple minutes or so just sort of like greeting people and go, hey, who's watching us here tonight? Or they'll ask people, you know, where are you watching from? And it's really cool when you have people from all over the world chiming in with where they're, where they're watching from. Or, you know, and you sort of greet them by name. And so it's a way to really connect with people, whether there's five people on your scope or there's hundreds. When you give them shout outs by name and, you know, interact with them live and, can, and, and, and ask questions and answer questions, you know, right there in the moment, it's a pretty cool way to connect with people. So anyway, so as to keep this podcast from being three hours long, I just want to give you sort of a basic overview of Periscope there. Now I'm going to get in some actual ways that you can use it for music marketing. So I've basically explained how it works, but what you do with it is the crucial thing and how you engage with people. So I'm just going to go down a quick list here of some of the uh, you know primary ways that you can engage with your fans or use Periscope for music marketing. So uh, number one here is you can stream your live shows. Um, I've seen people doing this either at concerts they're attending, you know, stream a song or something. Uh, I've seen speakers and people at conferences will uh, will stream a particular uh, speaker or a little part of their of their talk, almost like a little <laughs> live uh, streaming uh, TED talk or something. And so why not do that with your live shows when you're playing somewhere for the people that can't be there in the room? You know, have uh, someone off stage, a friend or associate with their phone uh, streaming uh, a song or two to give people a taste of what's going on, particularly if there's a good crowd there and, you know, to show them the excitement of the room. So you can stream live from your actual live shows as they are happening. Other ways of streaming your music, how about streaming parts of your uh, recording sessions? Uh, I mean, you don't want it to be a distraction while you're creating, um, but there are times maybe uh, when you can get, you know, one of the takes that you do in a, in a studio setting, you know, stream that live, or maybe when you're taking a break in between sessions, stream live and let people know what you're doing and what you're working on when the album will be out all that good stuff. You could also stream your rehearsals. Again, you don't have to do the whole thing. It was a two hour rehearsal. I, I'm not sure if there's a time limit. I think there is a time limit on Periscope. It's pretty long. But you don't have to do them for an hour if you don't want to. You can do it for five minutes. You can do it for 20 minutes, you know, rehearse some songs, periodically look at the phone and check the comments or ask for what people would like to know about how you uh, structure your rehearsals and all that good stuff. You could even do 
special scopes where you share snippets of new songs that you're working on, like a sneak peek on the new album, or here's a new uh, you know riff or a verse and a chorus I'm working on. Uh, you know, don't get too paranoid about people stealing your stuff, but just share the creative process and let them know what you're working on, or even cover songs or whatever. Just share new new songs. And you wouldn't do all these things in one scope, so you could divide them up or, you know, and do different a different concept each time you do a live broadcast, or do a regular thing on one of the, you know, pick one of these things that I'm going through, or a couple of them, and regularly do those types of formats with your with your Periscope broadcasts, also known as scopes. What if you did this? You broadcast live from, let's say, your living room and you take requests from your fans. You know, you just watch the comments and pick the songs that you can riff on, uh, you know, and just play something spontaneously. Have some fun with it, which is what I say about music marketing in general. It shouldn't be drudgery or it shouldn't be all business, you know, have some fun with it. And as I started to allude to just a moment ago, here's a key best practice for, really, it's not only for Periscope, it's for social media, it's for anything that you do. If you really want to get a lot out of this, what some of the people that are really killing it lately with Periscope is they do something on a regular basis. I mean, some people actually do something daily at the same time. That might be going overboard for you. But if you f find that you enjoy this after you've experimented with it for a while, why not do a, a weekly or a something on a set schedule where you get people used to tuning in? That seems to work really well, really no matter what the format is, but for Periscope in particular, so people know that on Tuesdays at noon or whatever the time is that you've set, you're going to be doing this thing on Periscope and they get used to tuning in and watching you and participating on a regular basis. That seems to be the best way to make this thing really work for you. Also, and I've got a few more tips after this, but while I'm thinking of this best practices thing, one way to, to expand to others, uh, to, to build your following on scope and awareness on Twitter is to ask people that are live on the broadcast to share it. And I know on a uh, iPhone, which I have, I think you like swipe to the right uh, or swipe up at one or the other, and it'll show some information about the uh, that particular broadcast while they're watching it live. And one of the options is to share it, and they can share it with their friends on Periscope or on Twitter. Uh, there's a couple of different options there, but you know, have a call to action. Ask people to share it, and then people will tune in live, and then hopefully start following you on Periscope, maybe following you on Twitter if they weren't already. And so, uh, yeah, ask the people that are already there to help you spread the word to other people and figure out what it is on, I'm not sure what, which way you swipe on Android, but uh, you could easily figure that out and then give instructions to your live viewers and how they can share it as it's happening. Other formats that you can use when you do your live scopes, one is just an open Q&A with fans. It could be uh, Ask Me Anything you know, about the songwriting process, about life on the road. Just keep it open and say, you know, ask me anything about uh, life and music and all that good stuff. That seems to work for a lot of people. Oh, how about segments with meet the band or meet the crew? So every scope you focus on a different member of your band, assuming you're not just a solo artist or people that support you, you know, interview your engineer or producer, um, the lead singer, the drummer, or even the person that works the merch table at all your live shows. Just introduce them to your tribe, to your posse, whatever word you want to give for the people that support you and the music that you make. Scopes uh, being a visual medium are also a great way to reveal and display new artwork, like the new CD. You're considering a couple of different designs and you can hold it up and visually show it. New merchandise, new t-shirt designs. And you can make a big deal out of it being the, uh, you know, the debut or revealed for the first time our new merch designs or our new artwork for the upcoming album or however you want to position that, again, to have some fun with it. Maybe you could have scopes where you explain the story behind the song or songs where you go in depth about what inspired the lyrics to a particular song, especially if they're somewhat popular with your existing fan base. Another best practice here is to alert your fans ahead of time. Yeah, so let people know through social media and through your email list, and hopefully you do have an email list, 
um, when you're going to be doing your scopes, let them know how, where they can go. You know, I think it's periscope.tv is the Periscope site. Basically, it just has links to the iTunes App Store and the Google Play Store where the, where the app can be downloaded. There's not much you can actually do on the Periscope site. Anyway, send them there to download the app and make them aware that you're doing these things so that people connect with you that way and start following you within the Periscope app itself. Oh, and again, since you don't need Wi-Fi, there's all sorts of possibilities with life on the road, you know, wherever you are, whether you're just stopping for gas or stopping at fast food or, you know, doing a sound check or whatever, do the occasional live scope from the road and show, you know, give them peeks into your world because people love to live vicariously through musicians and the artists that they admire. And so just be thinking of ways that you can do that. And don't think of this as another chore, as another job that you have to do. Again, have some fun with it. Like if they were coming along with you on the road or to the studio or to the gig, what would you like to show people that don't live that lifestyle that you do? You know, use your phone, which you're carrying with you most likely all the time anyway, to give people a little peek into your world. It will help to form a stronger connection with your fans and the people that follow you and are interested in what you're doing. And one more tip here to wrap things up. When you attend like conferences or musician meetups or whatever, why not interview someone that you meet or someone that you admire, you know, spontaneously <laughs> you're hanging out at the bar or the restaurant or whatever. You go, hey, you mind we do a quick scope here and Hopefully they know what it is. You could quickly explain it to them and go live and just have a conversation and introduce them to your fans and take questions or however you want to structure that. But it's not just about you necessarily. You can interview other people, people you work with, people you admire, people you meet, even on the street, I suppose. But at a music conference where maybe someone that they're familiar with or someone that you just like to you know, give a little shout out to and send them some love live during a scope broadcast. So there you go. I know even though we've already spent 20 plus minutes on this, we've kind of just barely scratched the surface. I ran through the stuff pretty quickly, but I hope you get a good overview now of what Periscope is and the opportunities it might provide you to promote your music and connect with more fans. I'll put as many links as I mentioned here as I can remember in the show notes of this episode. And so I hope you enjoyed that. Again, remember the Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook Bundle. It's the classic guide to in music marketing and if you'd like a physical copy of the latest edition that bundle is really awesome and I, i'll have the links in the show notes i mentioned it at the top of the hour and also the creative entrepreneur summit seven steps to building a thriving career in the arts i would love to meet you in person on saturday november 14th in st louis missouri that's it for now thanks for tuning in please rate and review and subscribe to the podcast and itunes or stitcher <laughs> Let's try that again. iTunes or Stitcher or wherever podcasts are served. And uh, yeah, I'd really appreciate that, uh, letting other people know what you think of the podcast and spreading the word. All right, that's it for now. This is Bob Baker saying so long for just a while. <laughs>